Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have started their most dangerous task so far. They're moving used fuel, which emits high levels of radiation. They'd already started transferring unused fuel out of a reactor building, but that's easier to handle. On today's Nuclear Watch, we find out how they're doing and the challenges that lies ahead. This is the inside of the building housing reactor number four. More than 1,500 fuel rod assemblies have been sitting in the cooling pool since the disaster in March 2011. Now workers are transferring them to safer places. They've moved 22 assemblies of unspent fuel to a separate facility. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say the job went smoothly. So they decided to start removing rods containing spent fuel. The high levels of radioactivity add to the difficulty of moving them. Dealing with spent fuel rods is no different from dealing with unused ones. Workers will do the same task as before, taking into account the high radiation level. Now, NHK World's Hajime Okada has more on the operation and the risks involved. At first, the process was slow. That's because the workers had to carefully conduct the operation using an underwater camera when they were removing the fuel and placing it in the container. But the more times they repeated the procedure, the more they got used to it, and the pace picked up. Now, work is basically proceeding as scheduled. Two containers are being used for the operation. While one container moves fuel rods to the storage facility, the other is on standby, ready to remove the next batch. Using two containers makes the whole operation more efficient. TEPCO said that if an earthquake or some other event were to cause a container to fall, it would be ready to act appropriately. The crane is 30 meters above ground level. A fall from the height could disturb the lid or even damage the fuel inside the container. That could cause radioactive water or other substances to leak. If such an accident were to occur, workers would be temporarily evacuated. After that, the damage would be assessed using surveillance cameras and radiation monitors installed within the reactor building. Red plates and other items will be stuck around the container to shield the workers and the environment from the effects of radiation. Still, TEPCO says the chances of a container falling are basically non-existent. It says that's because the crane is equipped in such a way as to prevent a drop. The wires holding the containers are doubled up, so they will not fall even if one wire breaks. And large springs have been attached to the platform part of the structure to keep the containers stable in the event of an earthquake. One of the biggest challenges is securing experienced workers over the wrong run. Even now, radioactivity readings at the site were about 200 microsieverts per hour, a lot higher than normal standards. The workers' exposure levels are constantly being monitored and kept under control. No worker can be exposed to 50 or more millisieverts per year. Things appear to be moving according to plan for now at reactor number 4 building. But TEPCO may find previously unknown damage to the fuel or sunken debris could hamper the removal process. If dealing with such problems takes time, 
veteran workers could be exposed to too much radiation and procuring labor could become difficult. And once the workers finish with the reactor number four building, they'll move on to buildings one through three. And the radioactivity measured in those areas is much higher. The people who monitor airborne radioactivity around the world have launched a new system they say can predict movement faster and more accurately. Officials from the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, or CTBTO, unveiled the new computer system at their headquarters in Vienna. Experts there monitor airborne radioactive materials and seismic tremors caused by nuclear tests. They can also track how radioactivity disperses after a nuclear accident. The new system can locate the source and predict the movement of radioactivity in the air more accurately and 20 times faster than previous systems. The Japanese government contributed about $740,000 to upgrade the system in the wake of the Fukushima nuclear crisis. CTBTO experts analyzed the spread of radioactivity after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Japan's nuclear regulators have approved a new set of safety guidelines for nuclear facilities other than power plants. The rules cover 247 sites nationwide, including nuclear reprocessing plants and nuclear research facilities. Members of the Nuclear Regulation Authority endorsed the guidelines in a meeting. The new rules take effect on December 18th. They were compiled following the 2011 meltdowns at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The new rules require facility operators to take stricter measures against earthquakes and tsunami. Operators are also required to improve safety measures to prevent hydrogen explosions and uncontrolled nuclear chain reactions during emergencies. The NRA is currently studying the safety of seven idle nuclear plants that have applied to resume operations. Lawmakers in Japan's lower house have passed a bill that would give government officials sweeping powers to decide what constitutes a state secret. The bill would give senior government officials the authority to define what are known as special secrets. That would include information related to defense, diplomacy, counterintelligence, and counterterrorism. Public servants found leaking or deliberately obtaining such information could be jailed for up to 10 years. The bill is expected to pass the upper house before the current session of the Diet wraps up next month. It co could go into effect next year. This bill is for securing the safety of the Japanese people. We will explain its purpose to them. I know that some of them are concerned about the bill, but we will work hard to address their concerns through debates in the upper house. The largest opposition party, the Democratic Party of Japan, opposed the bill. I'm very angry at this decision. This huge party has ignored the voice of the people. There hasn't been enough discussion of this issue within the Diet. This decision is an act of violence. The ruling coalition of the Liberal Democratic Party and New Komeito discussed changes to the bill at the request of two opposition parties. Some lawmakers wanted to ensure the government would not be able to classify information arbitrarily or in a way that infringes on the people's right to know. Now the bill specifies that secrets will remain classified for a maximum of 60 years with some exceptions. One example is where they include information that could hurt negotiations with foreign governments or international bodies. The bill states that a study will be conducted into creating an independent panel to check whether information classified as a special secret deserves that status. The Japan Department Stores Association has come up with a report stating ways to prevent mislabeling. This does follow a series of scandals involving restaurants and other tenants that engage in false labeling on foods. The survey shows that 51 out of 85 member stores, that's 60%,
have been found to have wrong descriptions. The report says that this is because department stores leave restaurant operations to their tenants, failing to give strict instructions. The association also points out store operators lack knowledge on the laws governing the labeling of processed meat and other items. To prevent a recurrence, the report says department store operators should ask tenants to present documents. These should certify that the labels on foodstuffs and cooking methods are authentic. The report calls for more staff with special knowledge of food to supervise restaurants. The association also says department stores should conduct spot checks as well as regular inspections. Japan's lawmakers have enacted a bill to create a Japanese version of the U.S. National Security Council. The new body will oversee foreign and security policies. Upper House lawmakers passed the bill with a majority vote on Wednesday. The lower house had approved the bill earlier this month. Japan's prime minister will chair the council. Other core members will include the foreign and defense ministers and the chief cabinet secretary. Five other cabinet members will join the council for expanded meetings. This includes the transport minister who's in charge of the Japan Coast Guard. The prime minister can also call in other ministers in times of emer emergency. Government officials aim to set up the council's office in January. Any news? Something very odd is happening in the Pacific. Sea creatures acting strangely, species turning up were rarely seen, related to Fukushima crisis, question mark. LA lifeguard used to be two shark sightings a year, now it's two a day. Strange things indeed are happening along the west coast of the United States and Canada. And you gotta remember that big tsunami all those chemicals splashing up against the coast of the United States and Canada right now on top of all the radiation that's been non-stop leaching into. And all these diagrams they keep showing you over and over are just based on a two-week spill or whatever. Not ongoing. Expansive death zone of birds on Alaska Island. This is the same one I reported the last time. Perhaps the thousands were washed ashore. Resident radiation always on the back of our minds. Samples sent to the lab for testing. I wonder if we'll ever see the results of that. Reporter. Facebook alarmists fear Fukushima to blame. Well, we're alarmists now, are we? Press release. Dust is inside spent rods at unit number four. Footage shows corroded and discolored tops of fuel assemblies. Uh, air film, air's film of container dropping from crane during test. Uh, this is all part of the, hey everybody look at number four, hey everybody look at number four. I'm not 100% buying it. Professor, Fukushima is absolutely horrifying. Radiation will be entering the Pacific for decades. There's no in end in sight. Nobody has a solution. Problems are unprecedented. Uh, I believe it's going to be longer than decades to come. Centuries, millennium, millions and millions of years. CBC government scientists are now detecting Fukushima radioactive plume offshore of Canada. Professor, it's headed to our coast. I think monitoring rainfall over the next couple years is prudent. Why aren't they monitoring? Why aren't they monitoring? Or they're monitoring, but they're just not telling us, are they? Oh yeah, I'm a fugitive in Japan. Security law approved in Japan. Prison for inappropriate reporting. Official, we're on a path to be fascist state. Fear of Fukushima cover-ups to worsen. This is quite the understatement. Uh, the criminals in Japan are cracking down on anybody who wants to speak the truth. And in comparison, actually, these Japanese laws are nothing in compared to what's going on in the United States right now. So, I will continue to report as long as possible, uh, knowing <laughs> I could never go to Japan like I would want to anyway. Unpublished data, plutonium levels slightly elevated in Pacific after Fukushima. Scientists, it's most likely flowing from plant into ocean, you think. 
2.5 trillion becquerels of plutonium released to air in four days after 3.11. But remember, it's been aerosolized, aerosol, the plutonium in aerosol form. We've all been breathing for uh, 